Let's play a simple game of hide and seek. You have two hiding options. The first is to go behind the hedge. And if you don't like that, instead, you can choose to hide behind the house. I will not see where you go. And after you've made your decision, I'll come in and choose whether to search the hedge or the house. If I guess correctly, I win a dollar and you win nothing. However, if I choose the wrong place, you will win a dollar and I will win nothing. The solution to this game is very simple. In fact, this sort of strategic circumstance is so common in game theory that we have a name for it. It's called matching pennies. And in matching pennies, the way that you avoid being exploited by me is to randomize your decision evenly. In this case, that means hiding behind the hedge 50% of the time and hiding behind the house 50% of the time. Likewise, to prevent you from exploiting me, I will search the hedge 50% of the time and search the house the other 50% of the time. But that's not the puzzle I wanted to explore today. Let's add a slight wrinkle to this. Imagine that the house has a security system in it, so that if you try hiding behind the house, there's a light in front of it that might turn on. And if it does, when I open my eyes to go search for you, I know exactly where you are. You're behind the house, I will search there, and I will guarantee that I win the dollar. To give you a fighting chance, let's imagine that the security system is only 75% effective. I now have two questions for you. First, how often should you hide behind the hedge, given that we have the security light in front of the house? And second, how often should I search behind the hedge? And of course, we're conditioning my strategy on me not seeing the light. Obviously, whenever I see the light, I'll be heading directly to the house. So we're looking at my strategy when I do not see that light turn on. While you're thinking about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. The puzzle for today is an application of the mixed strategy algorithm, which appears in chapter one of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the answer? Well, intuitively, you would expect me to search behind the hedge more often. That's because I can use the security system as a crutch. I can rely on it to expose you some portion of the time that you've hidden behind the house, which therefore makes it more tempting for me to search the hedge whenever I don't see the light turn on. And indeed, that's what we'll see for me. When we have the security system there, I will be searching the hedge more often than in the absence of that security system. You might think that you should adjust similarly. Because you want to avoid the automatic loss whenever the light turns on, perhaps you should be hiding behind the hedge more often now that we have the security system in place. And yet, what we're going to see is that the opposite is true. You should play into that weakness by hiding behind the house more often. I'll prove this with the math in a second, but there is some intuition for what's going on here. With the security light, I'm already predisposed to searching the hedge. If you were to adjust your strategy and hide behind the hedge more often, that's just reinforcing that for me, and I could very easily exploit you by focusing on the hedge exclusively. To counteract that incentive, you can hide behind the house more often. And it is true that you'll lose automatically 75% of the time whenever you do that. But the alternative is hiding behind the hedge, and I'm searching there really frequently anyway. So either way, you're in trouble. Now let's prove everything. Whenever we're in a situation that requires this sort of randomization, the strategy of one player is designed to make both of the alternatives of the other player look equally attractive. So if we want to figure out the probability that I search the house, we need to figure out what mixing percentages are going to make your payoff for hiding behind the hedge equal to your payoff for hiding behind the house. If we let P be the probability that I search the house, we can write your payoff for hiding behind the house as 0 times 
that's 75% of the time you automatically losing. And then the remaining 25% of the time will depend on what I have chosen to do. That P portion of the time I have chosen to search behind the house, you'll lose again and get nothing. And the remaining one minus P portion of the time, I will search behind the hedge and you'll finally get a win. Your payoff for hiding behind the hedge is much simpler because we do not have to worry about the light turning on. Instead, you'll win whatever portion of the time that I've searched behind the house, which is probability P, and that's why you're getting a one there. And then the remaining one minus P portion of the time, I'm searching behind the hedge and I'm catching you, so you're winning nothing. Because we want to make those two things equal to one another, we simply set them equal to one another and then solve for P. And when we do that, we get P equal to 0.2. So 20% of the time I should search behind the house and 80% of the time I should search behind the hedge. The intuition that we had before is working out correctly. Now that we have the security light, I am less likely to search the house than I was before. Furthermore, we can see how this relationship generalizes in this figure. On the horizontal axis, I have the probability that the light works, and on the vertical axis, I have the probability that I search the house. When the probability that the light works is zero, that's essentially the original problem from before, we see that I'm doing an even split, 50-50. But as the light becomes more effective, I start searching the house less frequently, and indeed, when the light is perfectly effective, I never search the house at all. Now we can figure out what you should be doing. Let Q be the probability that you hide behind the house. The goal for your strategy is to make me not care whether I search behind the hedge or search behind the house, given that I do not observe a light. So if we can write out the payoffs for both of those things, we can then set them equal to one another and solve for Q to figure out what you should be doing. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous set of calculations because we're having to condition this on me not observing the light. So my payoff for any one of these strategies not only depends on what your probability is of choosing one option or the other, but also the probability that you're revealed under those circumstances. So to understand what the probability is that you hid behind the house given that the light did not go off, it might help to diagram all of this. If you're hiding behind the house with probability Q and hiding behind the hedge with probability one minus Q, there are two ways that we can have the light not turn on. Essentially, we're going to be ignoring the circumstance where you've hidden behind the house and the light worked because we already know I'm going to be searching the house under that circumstance. So if we do not observe the light turning on, it could be the case that Q portion of the time, the light failed 25% of the time, or it could just be that one minus Q portion of the time you simply hid behind the hedge. Bayes' rule allows us to calculate my posterior belief that you have hidden behind the house, given that I observe no light. To do that, all we do is take the probability of me arriving at that particular outcome, in this case, that's Q times 0.25, and dividing it by the total probability of reaching a situation where no light is turning on. There are two ways that can happen. There's Q times 0.25, and then there's one minus Q. So 0.25 times Q divided by 0.25 times Q plus one minus Q is my posterior belief. This is the belief that I have that you've hidden behind the house given that I do not observe a light. Now all we have to do is go back and plug them into the equations from before, set them equal to one another, and solve for Q. And when we do that, we get Q equal to 0.8, meaning 80% of the time you're going to be hiding behind the house. Despite the fact that the security light will expose you now, you are more likely to hide behind the house than you were before. We can also see that this relationship generalizes using this figure. Like the previous figure, the horizontal axis is the probability that the light works, and now the vertical axis is the probability that you hide behind the house. If the light never works, then you're in that 50-50 mixture. But as the light becomes more effective, you lean into the weakness, you hide behind the house more often. And indeed, as the light becomes perfectly effective, you go to hiding behind the house almost the entire time. If you enjoyed this video, 
please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.